Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Sega CD games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention for this video, we are already going to need to have both dev mode and RetroArch already installed on our Xbox Series S or our Xbox Series X. What I'll be doing is leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you step by step how to do that. I will mention if you've been following some of my older videos, we're going to be using the latest version of RetroArch in this video, 1.9.4. So the UI might look a little bit different than what we have before. However, the method will still be mostly the same. But if you would like to update your RetroArch version, you can follow the other video and then come back here and we can continue from here. Now for us to play Sega CD games, on our Xbox Series S or our Xbox Series X, we're going to be needing a few things. One, we're going to be needing an external drive to transfer our games and BIOS files over. Two, we're going to be needing BIOS files. And three, we're going to be needing game files. The next thing we're going to be doing is installing a file browser on our Xbox Series S and our Xbox Series X. This is so we can easily transfer our BIOS files into our RetroArch folder. And that's the next thing I'm going to be showing you. From this point, we're going to need to load up our Xbox Series X and we're going to need to know the IP address for the remote access on the bottom right. This is what we had to use to install RetroArch previously, but we're going to need to locate back to this website again to bring over some extra files that we're going to need to play PlayStation 1 games. From this point, we're going to be opening up our web browser and we're going to be locating to the URL that we had set previously from our Xbox. I have just logged in and I'm right here right now. So for us to bring our BIOS file to RetroArch, it is technically possible to do it from the web portal. However, I've always had a lot of issues with that, so I would recommend doing it through a file browser instead. So what we're going to be doing is installing a file browser on our Xbox through the web portal so we can actually transfer our BIOS files via the USB over to our Xbox directly. So what we're going to be doing to do this is come to this link. As always, links is in the description down below. And what we're going to be doing is downloading a file explorer application that we're going to be installing on our Xbox dev portal. So come to this link, simply click download, and then your download will begin. Once your download is done, we're going to be coming back to our Xbox dev portal. We're going to be coming to the My Games and Apps on the home section right here. We're then going to be selecting the add button here and we're going to be choosing our my explorer file.appx that we just downloaded previously click open select your file select next then select start and then your file will start to install now this can take a couple of seconds before it fully installs and opens up on your xbox and just like that the file should be installed so the first thing we're going to be talking about is the bios files and we will need a couple of different bios files depending on what you want to do with your sega cd so at the moment, I currently have three Sega CD BIOS files. I have BIOS underscore CD underscore E dot bin underscore J dot bin and underscore U dot bin. And these are for the different regions, Europe, Japan, and in the USA. And basically you will need one or all three of these, depending on what kind of games you want to play and what kind of region they're from. And they will need to be named exactly the same as this. So they'll need to be in this order. And these are the files we're going to bring over to RetroArch a little bit later to actually add to our RetroArch folder so we can load up and play Sega CD games directly over there. I will also mention, I'm not going to be showing you in today's video where to actually download BIOS files. You can feel free to go online or dump your existing console BIOS. Again, this will depend on what you want to do, but it shouldn't be too difficult to do. From this point, the next thing we're going to be talking about are games, and I have a couple of different games here. Again, I'm not going to be showing you where to download games, although you can feel free to go online, download them, or feel free to create a dump or backup of any games that you currently have. Either of these methods will work just fine. And what I have are a couple of games right here. Now, if you're like me and you have downloaded your games, they will most likely come in a .zip or a .rar format. Sadly, we can't extract this directly inside Windows, so we will need a second program. Program, WinRAR or 7-Zip, but all these will be linked in the description down below that can actually help us extract our games out. So what I'm going to be doing is extracting my .rar using 7-Zip. The process is very similar with WinRAR. We simply need to right click our file, hover over 7-Zip and we're simply going to be clicking extract here. Our game is then going to start to extract and depending on the size of your game and the computer, this can take a couple of seconds to do. And just like that, my game is extracted out. Now, when you extract your games, they will most likely be extracted into a .iso format file and a bunch of mp3 files. And this is exactly what we're looking for. So basically inside RetroArch, we're going to be playing our games directly from a .iso file or a disk image file. And what we're going to need to do is take all this information, both of our BIOS files and our game files, we're going to be putting them on our external drive, we're going to be bringing them over to our Xbox, and we're going to be continuing from there. Now, one extra thing to keep in mind is depending on how your games are set up, you might actually want to transfer them to the internal storage on your Xbox, rather than playing them directly from your external drive. So this is something you might want to experiment with. I will be showing you later in the video how to transfer your games to your internal Xbox as well, so you can play with either of these, see which one works best for you. Personally, I like to keep them on my external drive, but if you're having issues, it might be best to bring them to your internal drive. 
So this video is brought to you by me. Today I'm gonna to be sponsoring my own video at my new merch line. This is gonna be the first t-shirt I'm gonna be launching for the channel. It's a very nice quality print that you can get from Teespring. Everything is linked right below the video here and all videos on my channel. It comes in a number of different colors. You can get it in a hoodie, different women's style t-shirts, stickers. It'll definitely support the channel if you can check it out and I'd really appreciate it. Let's jump right into the video. From this point, what we're gonna be doing is locating to our external drive. And what we're gonna be doing is copying our BIOS files from our external drive and putting them in our RetroArch folder. To this, we need to select removable storage devices. We're gonna be selecting your external drive. For me, it's my E drive right here. From this point, I have them inside my Xbox folder, inside my BIOS folder. And if I scroll down here, I will have my Sega CD folder. And here I have my three Sega CD BIOS files, my CD underscore E, my CD underscore J, and my CD underscore U. So what I'm gonna be doing is multi-selecting and selecting all of these files and then copying them over. To multi-select, we can come up to the top right of my files explorer. We can click on the multi-select option right here. Once this turns gray, it means we can click multiple files. We're gonna be selecting all three of these files. Once they're all selected, we're gonna be clicking the start button. We're gonna be clicking copy file. And now we're gonna be locating to the RetroArch folder on our internal storage. To this, we come here to the left. We need to select isolated storage. From this point, our screen might be black. Don't worry, we're currently inside the My Files Explorer folder. We need to come back up one here on the URL bar. We're gonna be clicking on packages. And here we're gonna be looking for the folder labeled 1E4C. This is gonna be our RetroArch folder. It was the very first one for me. We simply need to click the A button to open this up. If you click it and it highlights, it means our multi-select is still active. We simply need to uncheck it. We need to uncheck the multi-select here and then we can select our folder again. From this point, we're gonna be scrolling down until we see local state. We're then gonna be scrolling down again until we see system. To scroll, you can use your right thumbstick and we're gonna be looking for the system folder right here. And here we simply need to paste our BIOS files inside. You can see I have all my other BIOS files from all of the other consoles I've been using before. So you need to come here, find an empty space, click the start button, and we're simply gonna be clicking the paste button. And then our BIOS files are gonna be pasted in here. And now our BIOS files are fully set up inside RetroArch. Now, as mentioned in the start of the video, depending on how your games actually come, if they come with a lot of extra files, you might actually need to transfer them to your internal storage for extra sounds and extra music to be played. That's because when you load a file from your external drive, it can only actually load one file at a time, not multiple linked files so we may have to transfer games to our internal storage. So to do this, what we're gonna be doing is coming back to our RetroArch folder, and I'm gonna be creating a folder here called Games. I actually already have one created, but to create a new one, what you can do is come up to the top right, click on the three dots, click on New Folder, and then you can simply create a folder named whatever you want. In here at the moment, I currently already have my PS2 game here, FIFA Street. However, you can feel free to put whatever games or files in here you want. So what I'm gonna be doing is locating back to my removable drive, and I'm gonna be locating to where I have my Sega CD games. So what I have right here is all my Sega CD games, and I'm actually gonna be taking my amazing Spider-Man vs. Kingpin right here. For games like this, I would recommend putting them inside a folder so you can keep all the necessary MP3 files and extra files in one place, so you can really easily locate them if there's any issues. So what I'm gonna be doing is copying this entire folder by simply right clicking, right clicking, clicking copy. Then I'm going to be locating back to my RetroArch folder. Once we're here, we're going to be clicking start again. We're simply going to be pasting this file. Again, this can take a couple seconds to a couple minutes, depending on how big your file is. And then our game is going to be transferred over here. From this point, what we're going to be doing is loading up RetroArch. From this point, we simply need to load up RetroArch. Once we're on RetroArch, we come to our main menu. We're going to be clicking on the load core option and we're going to be scrolling down until we see Sega. And here we're going to be looking for Sega-MS-GG-MD-CD or in brackets Genesis plus GX. We're simply going to be coming here. We're going to be clicking A to select this and we've selected our core. From this point, we're going to be clicking down one. We're going to be clicking on load content and we're going to be locating to where our games are. Now, once you're in the load content option, if you're loading your games from an external drive, they will show up on your E drive. So you can come in here and just locate your games. If you put them in your RetroArch folder like me, what we can do is scroll down here to the bottom. We're going to be coming to our Q drive right here, which is basically going to come inside the RetroArch folder that we created before. We're going to come in here. We're going to be coming to the games folder. And here's where you can find all of your games. Scroll down to your games folder or whatever you named it. And here I have my amazing Spider-Man vs. Kingpin. I need to come in here. Simply select here from this point my ISO file. Again, if you have multiple cores that can read this file type, you will need to select them from here. In this case, I'm just going to be selecting my current core, which is here at the very top, the Genesis plus GX. Click the A button. Our screen is going to go black for a couple of seconds and then our game is going to load up. Now, from this point, once your game is loaded up, if you would like to open up your game menu, you can press your key combination right now. For me, it's down and select. And then we're going to be opening up our menu. 
From here, we can see all of our default retro arch settings, but from here, we're going to be scrolling down and we're going to see the options tab. And here we can see some core specific options. I'm going to be going through a couple of them that can be interesting for you. The first one is system hardware. By default, it's on auto and I'd recommend leaving it here. But if you are having any issues loading up some specific games, you can come in here and select a specific system. The next thing again is going to be system region. Again, the same as above, you can come in here and select a specific region if you need to. However, auto for both of these didn't give me any issues. You can select the sound output. You can choose between stereo and mono. Again, I'd recommend leaving it on stereo, but you can choose between the two if you would like we have some frame skip options frame skip and then the frame skip threshold by default this is off and for the most part i would recommend leaving this off however if you'd like to enable either of these you can do this as well we also have cpu speed by default it's set to 100 and i would recommend leaving it however if you're having issues with some games with slowdowns you can come in here and feel free to enable this this can cause some extra issues so it is worth experimenting with depending on the game you're trying to play for the most part with the games i've tried i haven't had any issues but you can feel free to turn this on as well and there's some of the most common settings i'd recommend taking a look at with the sega cd the last thing i'd recommend doing is creating a game playlist you can see i have one on the screen right now for my playstation one it basically concatenates all of your games into this nice section so you can really easily select them you don't have to manually search for your games or manually search for a core anymore it makes your experience a lot better especially if you're using a lot of different consoles in retroarch i'm not going to be showing you that in today's video although i will be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where i show you how to do that it's definitely something i'd recommend and it'll make your experience a lot better and if you want to support the channel, feel free to click the join button. You can become a member of the channel for as little as one euro. It'll really help out the channel and push more videos in the future. You can click the join button right underneath any video on the channel to join the channel. And it's really easy to do. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to play Sega CD games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.